In this section, we'll talk about advanced features in HBase that are intended to allow HBase to take advantage of all the hardware found in modern commodity machine deployments. Here again is our system diagram with our load generation tools. The basic mechanisms we've talked about thus far allow us to take advantage of all machines in the cluster, to make trade-offs with I.O. and CPU, to balance the amount of RAM that we have to use, and to optimize I.O. across our disks. In this section, we'll highlight scenarios where new features can be used to take advantage of SSDs in many disk deployments, modern CPUs, new JVM features, and extremely large RAM deployments. When HBase was started, it was designed with machines that had four to six hard disk drives and one gigabit Ethernet NICs in mind. Today's machines quite commonly have 12 spinning hard disk drives or come in a hybrid configuration with 10 hard disk drives and two SSDs or possibly even all SSD configuration. Networking is significantly faster and less of a concern since it can keep up with all the disk I.O. There are several features that have been added to take advantage of these new hardware profiles. As we covered in the tuning for failure section, we wanted to have data locality as much as possible. Today, since the network is faster, going remote for data occasionally isn't as bad as it used to be. When HBase reads from the underlying HDFS file system, it only needs to read one of any of the three replicas to return consistent and valid data. As we can see in the illustration, sometimes a local node can be hampered or slowed. In these cases where HDFS is being a bottleneck, the read will be slow from the HBase client's point of view as well. Instead, HBase can be configured to choose to read one of the other replicas if the primary replica is taking too long. That allows HBase to improve the client's read latency with no compromise in consistency. Let's take a look at this case again. But now, since we have HBase configured to use hedged reads and a timeout has occurred, our response times are significantly better. We get our answer back in this amount of time as opposed to this. To enable this feature, we can go into CM and look up hedged in the configuration search box. It'll give us options for setting the number of threads we would like for hedged reads and the delay before we use the hedge read. By default, it's disabled and it has a 500 millisecond delay. And this can be tuned for your particular application. Next, let's address the fact that we have more disks today than we used to. Historically, by design, all regions served by a region server hit the same single wall so that all writes can essentially be sequentially written onto physical disks. Disk seeks are an extremely scarce resource and this design minimizes the number of seeks necessary. As we've increased the number of disks, we can run into a problem where seeks are scarce on some disks while other disks remain idle. As of HBase 1.1, we can use disk configurations that have 12 or 24 disks. By utilizing all the disk seeks, we can significantly improve our HBase's write performance by using all disks in parallel. Here, we have multiple write-ahead logs, and these writes can actually happen in parallel. In our most recent versions of HBase and HDFS, we can take advantage of HDFS's Hierarchical Storage Management System, HSM, that allows you to choose walls to be on the SSDs. This changes our hardware profile from where seeks are expensive to where seeks are nearly free. This allows us to go to the limit, potentially, of having one wall per region, which promises to improve our recovery times as well as improving our throughput. To enable multi-walls, we can go into CM and look up wall. As you can see, our wall provider is set already to be the multiple HDFS wall server. We can also change the per region server number of wall pipelines simply by modifying this value. A good rule of thumb is to set it to be number of drives divided by three. Every time you write, you write three replicas. In a 12 disk setup, it would make sense to set this to four. Or in a 24 disk setup, set this to eight. When HBase was started, 32 gigs of RAM was large, even in server class machines. Today, it is quite common to have 128 to 256 and beyond gigabytes of RAM per machine. Back then, Java 6 was the standard, while today, Java 7 is end of life, and Java 8 is the new standard. In the past, we would, by default, use the combination of the Parnu GC and the concurrent Mark Sweep GC JVM garbage collectors. For latency-sensitive applications, we'd limit this to under 12 gigs of RAM, but would be comfortable going up to about 32 gigs of RAM of heap before worst case stop the world GC pauses could cause major problems and make machines seem like they were going down due to incorrect timeouts. Java 8 solves one of these problems by introducing the garbage first or G1 garbage collector. Reports from the field show that heaps up to 96 gigabytes per region server perform well 
though the older setup would have slightly better latency predictability with low settings. To go beyond 96 gigs of heap, HBase has introduced a feature called the bucket cache, which helps significantly. Let's go into CM and enable the G1GC. Here we are at the configuration page for HBase and Clutter Manager. If we search for GC and scroll down, we'll be able to find the Java configuration options for the HBase region server. And you can see here Parnu GC, Concurrent Mark Sweep GC, and some other settings associated with it are set up for the region server. We're going to replace that with the dash xx plus use g1 gc option and have a max gc pause of 100 milliseconds. We can go back up and search for heap, and scroll down to find our heap setting for the HBase region server, and set it to our new value, 96 gigabytes. And then restart our servers to enable the g1 gc. Now that we're using larger heaps with the g1 gc, we can use the rest of the available RAM by using the bucket cache. The bucket cache stores data in memory buckets. When configured in off heap mode, acts like an L2 cache, so the normal block cache is L1. This cache uses fewer objects and thus puts less pressure on our garbage collection engine. The bucketing mechanism creates evenly sized buckets of memory to avoid memory fragmentation that will cause the expensive stop the world garbage collection. There is a caveat with using it. It does require more CPU and has slightly higher than the average case latency because of the extra steps we're going through caching. This setting is not directly supported by Clutter Manager, so we'll go in and set configurations via a Clutter Manager safety valve. So here we are in Clutter Manager HBase configuration page. I'm going to type safety and limit the search to the region server since we're only going to be setting region server settings. I'll see that there are two places that I want to modify region server advanced configuration snippet for the HBase site XML file and region server environment advanced configuration snippet. This is for the HBase env.sh file. First, I'm going to add two settings to the env file, HBase off heap size 100 gigabytes and HBase ops dash xx max direct memory size equals 100 gigabytes. In this case, let's assume our machine is 256 gigs of RAM and we want to use 96 gigs of it for our heap and then we'll go off heap another 100 gigabytes. Next, we'll add some configurations to the XML file. We'll set the HBase bucket cache IO engine to off heap, so we'll use off heap caching. We've set the block cache size to 0.2. This is down from 0.4 because this will only be our L1 cache. The rest of it will be in our L2 bucket cache. And I set the HBase bucket cache size to 96 gigabytes. We can save these and restart the servers. Here we are logged into the master machine on our cluster, and I've punched in the command line HBase org Apache Hadoop Util native library checker. Let's run this. You can see here that we have our different native libraries for compression. We've included the Hadoop native library that has our checksumming code, Zlib, Snappy, LZ4, BZIP2, these are all compression algorithms, and OpenSSL for our crypto. We talked about how HBase can use modern hardware and some of the features that have been added to take advantage of them. For modern I.O., disks and network, we've talked about multi-wall and hedged reads. For modern memory setups, we've talked about the G1GC and the bucket cache. And for modern CPU, we talked about native libraries for CRC, encryption, and compression.